Hi everyone. Now, as part of this virtual world tour event, I am going to walk you through the labs for this section of the event. So the first thing we're going to do is go to cloud.oracle.com, which will bring us to this page here. From here, given that you're going to want to try your own hands-on experience with Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud, you can do that by following the link here, try for free, and we'll walk you through the process of setting up an account uh, with free hours so that you can run this lab uh, and then carry on going through the bigger lab that we have online um, to get the full experience of using Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. Once you've signed up, you'll get an email and then you can click on the sign in button. And the first stage is we're going to give you a tenant name. So I already have my, my own tenant, which is here. And along with the tenant, you're going to get a username and a password. So first thing for me to do is to sign in. And this gets me into my dashboard which gives me access to the whole suite of our cloud services. Now for this workshop, we're interested in an autonomous data warehouse cloud and we're doing provisioning as the first step. So from here, I'm just gonna click create an instance because that's what I want to do. I'm gonna go to all services, I'm gonna find autonomous data warehouse cloud and I'm gonna click create. And this is going to take me over to the management console for Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. Okay, so here we are. We're on the landing page. There's quite a lot of information here. We can see, okay, I'm actually in Autonomous Data Warehouse. Uh, I'm in something called a virtual world tour compartment. And a compartment is a way of organizing your autonomous data warehouse instances. So you'll see over here, we've got a scope, we've got a compartment, and you can see that I have different compartments. Each one contains a different set of autonomous data warehouse instances. So I've got some in my Frankfurt data center, I've got some in our London data center, and I've got some set up here for the virtual world tour. So as you can see, at the moment, I have no autonomous data warehouses set up. So let's see how we create one. So we have a big blue button here. We click on that and we'll start filling in the form. And it's very quick and easy to do. We're just going to ask you for a display name, a database name. So I'll keep it fairly simple. How many CPUs do I want? Let's say two. I can go up to 128 if I want. And I leave my storage at one terabyte, that's fine. Again, I can go up to 128 terabytes. Doesn't matter how many CPUs or how much storage you allocate here. The time it takes to provision and make your service available is the same. The last step, and this is pretty fast, so we've going to set this up really quickly is to create a password for my admin account. And if you missed that, let me just quickly go back over this. You'll see we have certain requirements, so it has to be between 12 and 60 characters. We need at least one uppercase letter, got to have at least one lowercase letter, and we need one number. So let me quickly redo that. And those now match. That's it. Those, that's all the information we need from you to create a new autonomous data warehouse cloud instance. So at this point, I can just click create. And you'll see here, it's been added to my table here, listing all my instances, current status provisioning, and we can see ADW Finance is the name I gave it, two CPUs, 
one terabyte storage and it was created uh, 20th to 7th of June 1329. So let's click on this. As you can see, there are hyperlinks here. So if I click on this hyperlink, it takes me to a more detailed page. So let's look at the detailed page and see what's going on here. First thing to notice, big badge on the left in amber tells me that we're currently doing something. You'll see this flick to green shortly. Uh, so at the moment, my status is provisioning. As soon as we're provisioned, we'll start kicking off backups. Backups happen autonomously. As a DBA a business user, there's nothing you need to set up to enable backups. They just automatically happen. There's like a 60 day rolling window of backups and you can restore from any one of those backups at any point in time that you need to, if you need to roll backwards um, at any point in time. And you'll notice at the top here, we have a series of buttons that because I'm provisioning, they're currently grayed out. When this is available, I'll have access to a service console and we'll go there next uh, to enable access for our BI tools, data integration tools, our developer tools. We can scale up our service so we can add more CPUs or we can add more storage and we can also scale down so we can reduce the CPU count and we can reduce the amount of storage we're currently using. And of course, I can reset the admin password that I typed in on the form just a minute ago. One of the nice things about this is, let's say it's Friday afternoon, everybody's about to go home, and I really don't want to be paying for CPUs over the weekend because nobody's going to be using the system. Wouldn't it be nice if I could stop the billing process? Well, that's what this button will do. Once this is highlighted, uh, it will say stop. And if I click that, we'll turn off the CPUs. And that means billing will stop. So on a Friday afternoon, I could stop my service. Billing will stop. Come in on Monday morning, click start. CPUs will be activated again. And my billing starts. And there it is. Our autonomous data warehouse is now available. So all my buttons, as you can see, have lit up so I can now go to my service console I can scale up scale down I can do a restore backups not kicked off yet um, and I can stop my service if I need to and and I can also delete it I can terminate the service if I finished with it and if I go back up to my main page here it is and currently showing me green available there we go how to create a new autonomous data warehouse instance in five very, very simple, easy steps. Okay, so our data warehouse is ready, it's available. Now let's connect some of our developer tools to this new data warehouse. So I'm gonna click back on here and go back into my page for my finance data warehouse. And I'm now gonna access my service console. So I've got my admin account, which is the one that we saw was set up by default when we created the instance. And here's the password that I entered on that create instance form. So if I log in, I'm gonna land on the management overview page. So this is my dashboard. This tells me everything I need to know about what's going on with my instance. Of course, I've just created it. So there's not much going on at the moment. So what I need to do right now is go to the administration page. Now Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud uses secure wallets. So we need to provide tools with a zip file containing the credentials to access our Autonomous Data Warehouse, in this case, our ADW Finance instance. And to do that, we download a credentials file. So if I click on that, and I'll give it a password. And the rules are basically the same as we had before. You want to keep this nice and complex. Ah. 
so complex you can probably not remember it. Ah, success. Okay, so now I can save this zip file which is going to contain all of the security information that's going to allow me to connect to my autonomous data warehouse. There we go. That's my first stage of my setup. The next stage is to make that available to whoever's going to use, let's say, as you're going to use in the next lab, SQL Developer. So now let's swap over to SQL Developer and see, having got that download file, how we'd use it. Okay, here we are, SQL Developer. So we are currently in version 18.1, as you can see, which is the latest version available on the OTN page for SQL Developer. Hopefully you've downloaded it, got it all set up, you're ready to go. So how do we now take that file that we just downloaded and use it within SQL Developer to connect to our autonomous data warehouse? So the first thing we do is, with, from within the connections dialog, click new connections. You can see I've got no connections here. So I'm gonna create a new connection. I'll call it admin low. You'll see why in a minute. And admin is the username. And now we need to reuse that username password that we set up when we created our instance. Okay, so I'm just going to click save that password so I don't have to keep entering it every single time. Now the connection type, we need to click on that and we're going to select cloud PDB. So click that and you'll see this changes now. So here I need to point to that configuration file that I just downloaded. So I'm going to click on here, and if I go to my desktop, there's my file. So you'll see it's the naming prefix or the naming syntax that we use is wallet underscore and then the instance name. So I know my instance was called ADW Finance. So I can open that. And I now need to give it the password, which my DBA or my cloud person would have given me from when they actually created the process for downloading that file. Fortunately, that person was me, so I know what the password was. And, oh, I'll have to do that again. Okay, so. Now, up here, you'll notice I said admin low. You're probably wondering why. We, when we create an autonomous data warehouse, you'll see here, I've got three entries to identify my service. High, low, medium. And we're gonna look at these in a bit more detail in one of the next labs. For this lab, I'm gonna take low. Now I can quickly test this and make sure that it works. Yay, success. So I know the connection works. I know all the details that I've provided are correct. So I can now connect. So let's see if that works. That will appear at the top here. Here it is. I can now I've got my SQL worksheet. I can expand my tree and this will show me all the different objects that I can create. Let's see if we can query anything. So when we provision an autonomous data warehouse instance, we automatically get access to some useful schemas that you can use for testing um, or just running queries check the syntax is right and so on. One of them is called SH and we'll be using that in these labs. And I'm gonna check that everything's set up correctly by querying one of the dimension tables called 
channels. So if this is all working correctly, we should get perfect uh, a result, which is great. Now I said we had three resource groups. What I want to do now is create another one of those, these users or another one of these connection types. But this time I'm going to call it high and I'm going to change this to ADW Finance High. And you'll see why later on in one of the future labs. Okay, let's test that. Success, good. I will save that. And at this stage, we can connect as well because we can have as many connections open as we want. And we'll, again, we'll see panel opens up. I now have access to that. So let's just make sure that admin high is working and we get a result. And admin high is working and we get a result. So we're connected to our autonomous data warehouse. We can return data from some of the pre-built data sets that we provide with the autonomous data warehouse instance. We're good to go to start moving on to the next lab.